How y'all doing? Dawn back here again, and it's time to learn how to interact with SQL databases and go, oh yeah. Um, specifically, I'm going to be using MySQL for this example, because that's the one I have the most experience with. Um, before we get started, two things to note. Uh, one, this is not a tutorial on SQL itself. I'm going to assume you have some basic understanding of like how to set one up, uh, what tables are, how to write queries, things like that. Uh, second thing, if you've been enjoying my uh, Go tutorials or any of my other tutorials, be sure to uh, subscribe or follow whatever the vernacular is for the platform that you're watching this on. And with that, let me get started. So we are looking at a package in the standard Go packages called database slash SQL. And as you see, it says package SQL provides a generic interface around SQL or SQL like databases. The SQL package must be used in conjunction with a database driver. Um, that is because by default, the uh, Go standard libraries, there are no database drivers. There, they, 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 there aren't any. Um, what you have to do is find a third party dependency that implements this generic SQL interface. And, and when you import it, it'll like register itself so you can make use of it. Uh, so let me go over to my terminal. <laughs> I've already created this, um, this small project and I've already initialized the uh, Go modules in it. If we look at the Go mod, you will see that I have already imported a MySQL driver. Specifically, the one I chose is called Go slash SQL slash driver slash MySQL. Um, but I'm not going to import this into the uh, main.go file initially because I want to demonstrate to you that by default, there are no drivers to use. So in the imports, I'm just going to add the import for database slash SQL. And then here from the SQL package, there is a function you can call that actually returns to you a slice of all of the drivers that are registered. So if we do fmt.print line, and I'm just gonna say drivers, oops, that's not how you spell drivers, drivers, there we go. And I'm gonna say sql.drivers, like that. Um, so if we run this, go run main, you will see it is empty. There are no drivers by default. So let's, uh, we're going to import that driver now. Um, the way you import these drivers to use them is a little, maybe a little weird compared to how you've maybe been importing other dependencies. Um, if you, maybe you've seen other videos or seen some other people's code base, you can, you recall that you can like alias and import to reference it by a different name. You can actually alias it to an underscore. Which, if you recall, when um, I did a crash course on like the basics of Go, um, a underscore is used when you're like ignoring the re a return value from a function. This is kind of the sort of the same thing. You're basically telling Go, "Hey, I am importing this, uh, but d I'm not going to be directly re referencing it." So it's a uh, GitHub dot com slash go slash sql slash driver slash my sql like this now just importing this will register it so that you can we can make use of it if we run this again now you will see drivers my sql there is now a my sql driver register that we can now make use of uh, so how do we actually do that uh let me should have done this for i started let me open up my Projects go uh, courses. I need to I need to open up my notes real fast, and I forgot to do that. Okay. So the first thing you're we're probably going to want to do is actually like open up a connection to this database. So to do that, um, you use a function from the SQL package called open, and it returns two things. It returns a uh, a database pointer and and or and and or an error so we're going to have db error equals sql dot open now open takes two arguments it takes the name of the driver you want to use and basically like um what's that called a a data source address um that points to your database like where that your database actually is so as we've seen uh the driver we're using is MySQL. And then for the um, the address of the database, um, I have a 
like a local MySQL database running on my system through Docker. <laughs> so I'm going to do, uh, let's see. I'm going to do the user is root and the password is this called password one at TCP for the protocol. One, two, seven dot zero dot zero dot one on port 3306. And the database I have set up to use for this is called test. Um, in fact, let's go over to that real quick. So <clears throat> as you see, I've kind of already printed out some info so you can actually see my MySQL database instance. Um, here is the test database that we are using. Um, it has one table in it called product. Uh, product has three columns, a auto incrementing ID field, which is the primary key, a name field, which is just a bunch of bar chars, and a price, which is an int. And I have inserted, uh, I believe it was two rows into this previous, prior to doing this. So we're going to select star from product. Yes, there are two rows in this table already. So if we do any kind of querying on this, uh, where we're grabbing all the rows, we should expect two rows. Keep that in mind going forward. So, of course, if anything else, we're going to do, you know, if error is not equal to nil, uh, we'll do log.fatal, uh, unable to uh, open connection to db, something like that. Uh, and uh, so what do we want to do? Let's, um, let's, uh, so if, if a good practice, if you open up a database connection to make sure that you've closed it properly and you know, this would be more important if you're doing something more complicated is we're going to do a defer on DB dot close to make sure that the, um, any open connections are closed completely. So let's, um, let's actually do the same query that I did in the actual MySQL client but in go we're going to grab all the rows from products so we're going to do um results error equals db dot query and now we write in the query so i was going to do select star from product like this of course gotta check the error if error is not equal nil uh, log dot fatal uh, we're going to say uh could not, or it was a error, error when fetching product table rows, and then error. And in order to <coughs> uh, loop over this result set, um, there is a method you can call on this result set called next. And an easy way to just constantly like loop over your result set until you've like, uh, handled all of them is you can actually just loop over the four so we're going to do four res, uh, results dot next so this will keep looping over until next doesn't give you anything and what you have to do to get the data from the result set into something that you can interact with is you have to make use of a, a method on it called scan and scan you have to pass in a a number of arguments equal to the number of columns returned. If you don't, the runtime will panic, <laughs> or uh, it'll, it'll throw an error. Yeah, uh, actually, may I panic? I forget. So, <clears throat> a straightforward way to do this is we're going to just go go ahead and declare a couple of variables here: uh, ID of int, a name of string, and price of int, like that. And all right, okay. So we're going to do error equals results dot scan. And what you have to pass into this are pointers to the um, the variables that you want to put the values into. So we're going to say uh, ampersand ID, ampersand name, ampersand price, like that. And as always, you got to do the error checking. Uh, we'll go uh, log dot fatal, um, unable to uh, parse row, something like that, and error and then let's uh let's just print out this information okay fmt print and f we're gonna say id is this placeholder name percent s and price is percent d with a new line and we're passing in the id the name and the price just like that okay so if i run this right now 
we should get two uh, strings that look like this with those values. So I'm gonna run this syntax error. What I made boo. I make boo boo bits. Uh, line 32. Oh, whoopsie daisy. I didn't put the comma there. Genius. Okay. Run this now. Okay. So you see that we got two two lines of results and they match exactly what the um, rows are in our table. So cool, we can grab uh, all of the rows out of the table. Uh, now let's say, um, let's say we only wanna grab uh, one row. Well, there's a slightly different uh, method you can run or function from the, uh, where is method? I said method. Method from uh, the database when you're only expecting one row. Um, also, a good practice to do before I forget is when you get a result and you're gonna be done with it, um, you can either do a defer deep, or was it results.close? This, this kind of like with the, with the connection, just so that um, if you were using as like a production environment, that would free the result set so your, your, uh, your actual database server could, you know, be, be rid of the result set to free up resources. And we're going to do um, we're going to do we're going to do another something kind of like this, um, but it's a little different. So we're going to do um, I'm going to declare a variable here um, called actually I'm going to kind of do something similar to what I did up there. So like id int name string price int <coughs> excuse me, and uh, we're going to do uh, error equals db dot query row, and I'm going to do select star from product where id equals one. So this, yeah, you know, I, I know because I'm also I'm doing a where clause on a primary key that this should only return one, um, one, uh, one row. Um, if you use this and you get back more than one result, it's only going to basically take the first one and then throw the rest of them away. So if we have our row here, this actually returns a row. You don't have to keep calling like next to iterate over them. So we can just call scan on this. Now I'm gonna, pass, I'm gonna, you know, same thing as up there before. We're gonna pass in pointers to our variables, name and price, just like that. And you know, the, the usual error checking that you need to do. Um, FMT or log dot fatal unable to parse row and the error. So <laughs> excuse me. Let's um let's print all these out. Actually, I could probably just I'm just gonna copy this down here. Flap. Fix the end in it. So if I run this, this should give us a third row. That's basically the chew row twice. Yeah, because uh, now I'm only specifically querying for this one row. Let's kill two birds with one stone next. Let's uh, insert, insert some rows into our database. But not only just insert them with normal queries, we're going to insert them with prepared statements. Um, prepared statements are very good to use if you plan to be essentially running the same query over and over again with just different values, it's much more efficient on the database. Uh, so we're going to uh, loop over a slice of our, like a, a struct that looks like our product and um, pass them into our prepared statement arguments and run them. So we'll do some products, products equals slice of some anonymous struct I'm gonna make here, uh, where name is string and price is an int, just like our actual table. And we're gonna have, uh, let's see, we're gonna do light, just 10 bucks. And we're gonna have, um, uh, Mike is 30 bucks, sure. And maybe one more, we're gonna do, um, what we got, a uh, router. Router is 90 bucks, yeah. So, <laughs> excuse me. So now we need to set up our prepared statement. So we're gonna do um, statement uh, error equals db.prepare for your know, prepare statement. 
and we have to pass in our query that we want to prepare. So we're gonna pass in insert into product values, and we're gonna have two placeholders, just like that. Save that, and I'm gonna do, you know, of course, if error, if error does not equal nil, uh, log dot fatal unable to pre prepare statement and we're going to check the error so now we're going to loop over our products we're going to do four or hold on um yes uh for blank uh product equals range over products just like that <laughs> excuse me so we're going to run the uh, a method on the statement uh, struct that we have uh, called uh, exec for execute. It returns two values. It returns a result and an error. The result you can call two methods on it. Uh, the last was a last inserted ID and the uh, number of affected rows. Uh, but I'm not necessarily interested in that right now, so I'm going to toss that one. New error uh, equals <coughs> excuse me. Uh, stmt.execute. Now you have to pass in a any number of arguments, but the number of arguments has to be the same as the number of placeholders in your statement. So it's going to be product.name and product.price. Just like that. And we got to check our error as always. Uh, let's see. Uh, Log.fatal. Unable to execute statement yeah with the error and we're just gonna let this run and assuming we don't get errors we're going to just actually check our table in the database itself right so let us run this uh column count doesn't match oh yeah all right i mean boo -boo. i need to actually say what uh, what columns I'm actually doing. Uh, so name and price, just like that. That was the boo-boo that I made. But you'll see it said column count doesn't match value count. Uh, if I run this again, okay. So we didn't get any errors. So presumably if I go back over here and I run the same query again, we should have five rows in here, right? And there you go. We have our light, our mic, and our router. We have successfully queried from our database and we have successfully uh, inserted data into our database. Uh, and we also did it with prepared statements. Oh, and I made one boo-boo that you should do. Again, this isn't necessarily important here because this exits quickly, uh, but just like your, uh, your query result, um, once you should do a, uh, like a defer on smt.close to make sure that when you're done with this prepared statement that you free it up so your database can you know free the resources for other things um that's all i'm going to cover with y'all for this uh you sh this is you should be able to do basic things with your uh sql database now um you can of course do things like joins <coughs> and um you can you can even do transactions too if we go down to uh, the examples, there are a couple of examples here for doing transactions. So it allows you to you know, execute a number of queries and then depending on the result of those queries, you can um, commit the transaction so they all stick or that you can roll them back so that you undo all the things you did during the course of that, that uh, transaction. Um, if you have any, uh, any questions, be sure to leave me a comment down below wherever you're watching this. Um, and with that, and if you uh, if you like like this video and think it help anybody else, be sure to share it because I yeah you know, I'd really like to be be able to help other people. And with that, uh, y'all come on back now, and I'll see you next time.